bombshell steel and DOJ's ore exposed for colluding with Russian oligarch by Amy Moreno for truthfeednews.com. Well, 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 the conspiracy deepens as we delve deeper into the ties between Obama's DOJ and the dirty debunked dossier. Representative Devin Nunes told us to keep an eye on Bruce Orr and we can see why. The dossier author Christopher Steele lobbied DOJ official Bruce Orr to give a Russian oligarch who was banned from the United States due to ties to the Russian mafia a visa. The Daily Caller Christopher Steele was working on the Trump dossier at the same time he was lobbying DOJ official Bruce Orr on behalf of a Russian oligarch linked to Putin. Newly revealed emails show Steele uh, thought the U.S. government should grant visas to Deripaska, who had been barred from traveling to the U.S. Steele asked Orr to keep an eye on Deripaska's visa case. At the same time, Christopher Steele was compiling a dossier accusing the Trump campaign of colluding with the Russian government. The former British spy was lobbying uh, Department of Fish, uh, Justice official Bruce Orr on behalf of a Russian oligarch with close ties to Russian pla uh, President Vladimir Putin. The connection between Steele and the oligarch Oleg Deripaska is laid out in emails the Justice Department recently provided Congress. The emails show that Steele, a former British spy, advocated for Deripaska in negotiations over his visa status with the U.S. government. Deripaska, an aluminum magnate, uh, had been uh, blocked from traveling to the U.S. in 2006 because of suspected ties to Russian mobsters. Darapaska hired an American lawyer named Adam Waldman in 2009 to lobby the U.S. government to obtain a visa for the billionaire. The Washington Examiner detailed the exchanges which show Steele discussing Darapaska with Orr, the former number four official at the Justice Department. Steele's relationship with Darapaska has been one of the more bizarre aspects of the dossier saga mainly because it raises the possibility that the Putin-connected businessman was a source for the salacious document. Steele's unverified 35-page dossier relies heavily on information from anonymous Kremlin insiders who claimed that the Russian government was colluding with the Trump campaign to defeat Hillary Clinton. I heard from Adam Waldman, a Deripaska lawyer slash lobbyist, yesterday that uh, O.D. is applying for another official U.S. visa, ICE, APEC business at the end of February, Steele wrote in a January 12, 2016 email to or according to the examiner. Steele claimed that Deripaska had been encouraged by the agency who told Adam that the U.S.G. United States government stance on Deripaska is softening. A positive development, it seems, Steele added. Steele emailed Orr again on February 8, 2016, to say that Deripaska had been granted a visa to travel to the U.S. later that month. He also made a request of Orr in the email. As far as I'm concerned, this is good news all around, although, as before, it would be helpful if you would, uh, could monitor it. And let me know if any complications arise, he wrote. Or said, to the extent I can, I will keep an eye on the situation. In February of 20, uh, February 21, uh, 21st, actually, 2016, email, Steele said he was circulating reporting that he had done on Deripaska that suggested the oligarch was not a tool of the Kremlin. We reckon, therefore, that the forthcoming Deripaska contact represents a good opportunity for the U.S. government, said Steele. Links between, the Steel, between Steele and Deripaska began to emerge earlier in 2018 after Republican lawmakers began inquiring about a possible relationship uh, between the two. Senate Judiciary Committee Chuck, uh, Chairman Chuck Grassley 
uh, has pressed Steele, Waldman, and a London-based lawyer named Paul Hauser about Steele's possible links to Deripaska. FBI Director Christopher Wray was also asked about the relationship during a Senate Select Committee on Intelligence hearing on February 13th. Do you know if uh, Christopher Steele worked for Oleg Deripaska? Arkansas Republican Senator Tom Cotton asked Ray. That's not something I can answer, Ray replied, add adding uh, that there might be more that uh, he could say in a classified setting. Uh, it is still not clear whether Steele was working for Darapaska or interested in his visa status for other reasons. Give it a break. They're not, they would say on a, under a class of, of course Steele was working uh, for Darapaska. Steele's support for Darapaska would seem to undercut one of Trump's critics' theories about possible collusion. The Deripaska con that Deripaska conspired with Paul Manafort. You see, he conspired with Steele. Deripaska's business ties to the longtime Republican political operative have come under intense scrutiny from Democrats and the media, leading to some speculation that Manafort and Deripaska may have colluded during the 2016 presidential campaign. In one uh, July 7, 2016 email, Manafort told a Ukraine-based associate that he would be willing to provide briefings about the campaign to Deripaska. If he needs private briefings, we can accommodate, Manafort wrote to his associate, Konstantin Kilminik, Kilminik, whatever. At the time, Manafort and Deripaska were in a dispute over a failed business deal in... Uh, involving uh, Ukrainian cable companies. Manafort is currently on trial in Virginia for tax evasion and money laundering related to his political work in the Ukraine. Steele and Orr maintained contact throughout the presidential campaign and beyond according uh, to Orr's emails. On July 1, 2016, Steele reached out to Orr in hopes of discussing our favorite business tycoon. It is unclear if Steele was referring to Deripaska or Donald Trump. Well, I got news for you. It's a, a tycoon, a business tycoon. It's, it's most likely Deripaska into the steel and everything, right? Steele met with Orr and his wife, a Russian expert named Nellie Orr on July 30th, 2016 at a Washington, D.C. hotel. Nellie Orr also uh, happened to work at the time for Fusion GPS, the opposition research firm that hired Steele. Bruce Orr and Fusion GPS founder Glenn Simpson also appeared to have contact prior to the election. Simpson emailed Orr on August 22, 2016, asking to speak by phone. It is not clear whether the two spoke, but Simpson did not disclose uh, that contact when he discussed or during a November 14, 2017 deposition before the House Intelligence Committee. During that interview, Simpson said he met with Orr for coffee after the election to discuss the Trump investigation. Simpson did not tell the House panel that Orr's wife worked for Fusion GPS. Well, it's uh, getting very uh, uh, intricate to keep track of all of this. Uh, and I hope they're doing their job because it's very confusing. Um, it seems, look, they're, they're basically, they're not telling everything that went on. And more is coming out now to uh, show that they had uh, ties into getting this Deripaska guy, and Steele was most likely uh, working uh, for uh, Deripaska to get him in, because how come he was banned, and then the discussion is, uh, let's get him in. And then Deripaska shows ties to all these uh, people that they get... Um, information from the uh, mafia, the Russian mob, so to speak. So uh, I don't know what to make of this exactly, 
but you can be sure that these, uh, when uh, they were asked, they're not forthcoming with information. So uh, Tom Cotton did ask Ray, and he couldn't answer uh, that question if uh, Steele worked for Deripaska. So Ray says, oh, in a classified setting, I can talk, speak uh, about that. Uh, what classified setting? Did Steele work for Deripaska? Okay, so they were trying to set up this, this uh, stuff in order to, listen, I'll give you uh, information on Trump if you get Deripaska in. Just like uh, Veselnitskaya got the okay extension on her visa from Loretta Lynch. They were all working together to take down Trump, and they were doing favors for each other, in other words. It's, that, that's the only explanation here. And Ray wasn't forthcoming when he knows darn well what was going on, and he needs a, a closed-door setting, and yet the information is out there. It, he's not asked for classified information. Just asking you, did Steele work for Bedera Pasca? Uh, I can't tell you. So now it's out. And then, and then uh, Mueller was, uh, they're getting uh, Manafort on these charges with the Ukraine. And meanwhile, there's a picture of uh, Manafort, uh, Ma uh, excuse me, not Manafort, uh, Mueller. There's a picture of Mueller uh, going around the internet where they have pictures of Mueller with that uh, Ukrainian uh, official that they're charging uh, Manafort with. You know, and meanwhile, I think it was 2013, there's a picture of Mueller with uh, that uh, Ukrainian guy. Come on. This is like, you know what the thing is? This is a whole intricate setup, and you got to find all the pieces in, of the puzzle and put it together, which is uh, quite difficult, I'm, I must say. But uh, if they had all the paperwork up front, it wouldn't have taken this long to figure out. But they're not, Ray's not answering questions. Rosenstein wasn't forthcoming. The documents weren't forthcoming from the DOJ or the FBI. So, you know, like it's, it's difficult to put all this, this together. And that's what they're banking on, that uh, it, it would be difficult. But slowly but surely, uh, a lot of information is coming out. And it's not good for them because it's very incriminating. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching.